What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of NTG Builds. Yeah dude! What up dudes and welcome to Torco Garage with NTG Builds. I'm NTG Builds and we are building the Torco Vet C6 for the Drive to Pro Spec where I will be driving the C6 we'll be building in these uh, upcoming episodes to win my Pro 2 license or Pro Spec license. And um, you guys are going to be coming along with me as I build a stock 2006 C6 Corvette with an LS2 into a drift machine that's going to be competitive, be able to last the season so that I can have consistency and be able to actually march down the goals that we set as we go drive to prospect. Alright, so today what we're going to be installing is the Part Shop Max modified super angle modified knuckle. What that is, is the stock Corvette knuckle that Part Shop Max has went through a lot of R&D. It's not that they just did this, but uh, I believe this is version 3. And um, what they've done is they have taken a stock knuckle, put it on a CNC machine, and through all their R&D, shortened this arm, repositioned the where the tie rod end connects, and also milled down some of the sections to allow us to have a little bit more clearance on the uh, A arms and uh, other 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 parts of here. So we're in the camera over here, and we'll give you a better breakdown of what has actually been modified between the stock and the modified stock knuckle. So let's take a look at the modified knuckle versus the stock knuckle for the C6 Corvette by Part Shop Mac. So as you can see here, this is the stock knuckle, and this is for the actual driver's side, and then this is the passenger side modified knuckle. And if you look at here, the biggest difference you're gonna see is the length of the arm here. So that's what she said. Anyways, you can see that if you look at this position here, off of this position here, which has also been milled, so that's going to be hard to judge, so you're going to have to look at that hole. And you look at the distance between here and here, and then we look at this hole, and the distance between here and here. That is easily measurable with a tape measure, and we will do that right now. Center of hole, that's an inch and three quarters, as you can see right here. And then on the stock knuckle, we're talking about um, an inch or three and seven eighths. Looks about three and seven eighths, three and three quarters. So we're talking about a two inch difference here, guys. That's pretty crazy. And you know, two inches can make a whole lot of difference. So. As you'll also notice on the modified knuckle as opposed to the stock knuckle, there is some milling that has been done on the actual face up against um, on the back side where the hub is on here. And we actually lose this little clip right here that is holding the wheel speed sensor, I believe. Which is right there. Oh, that's dark. That's awful. And then um, this clearance helps us clear right up in there, which there's no light. That's awful. Sorry, guys. So I'll show you guys in there, but it's it's on the A arm there, and it's the shock or not the shock. It's the um, shoot, guys. Who is it? What is it? With that thing with the the deal. Um, Sway bar. So anyways, sway bar mount. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. I'll ask backwards. Three, two, oh, guys. For this installation, you're gonna need a very small list of basic tools. You're gonna need a 22 millimeter open end wrench, an 18 millimeter open end wrench. You're also going to need a 13 16 steep well, an 18 millimeter wobbly, a half inch wobbly, and a T55W. We're gonna be using a 3 8 impact and a half inch impact. If you do not have these tools available. It's possible to get this broken loose. It's going to take some determination, but I know you guys can do it. So come along with us and let's get installed. 
All right, guys, so step one, we're going to put the half inch wobbly on the 13 16, and we're going to be removing the caliper, the whole caliper with the pads and rotor all in one piece. And then we're going to go ahead and strap that up to keep the brake line safe. But first thing, we're just going to go ahead, make sure it's on reverse. Okay, and number two. Okay. So we're going to take this. I give it a quarter turn and I set, I'm going to set the caliper up on the lower A-arm. I put my motorcycle strap already through, come up, hook it on the A-arm. Up top is thinner. You can't get it on, well you can get it on mid, but you can't get it on down here. So you want to slide it up at the top, then grab your strap and secure it so it's hanging off of the strap and your brake line is completely relaxed, not pinched. So, when you install it, you don't have to get a new brake line. Now that that's done, next step, we're gonna take off the tie rod in. We're gonna use our 18 mil wobbly, or our 11 16 wobbly if you have that, and the 3 8 inch impact. So, yeah, gotta make sure we're sending it to the moon and stuff. Like we did that. Easy peasy. Let me find that before. We lose it. We're going to go ahead and put this back on here, just a couple threads down, so that when we use, let's see, do I have my hammer in here? No, I'll have to grab it. <clears throat> so when we break that loose, we'll be hitting this on here. We'll break this loose, and then this will drop out. As you can see right here, this tie rod and its boot is busted. So we're going to be coming back in here and replacing it. But what we'll do today, we'll get the alignment, uh, dirt down and dirty alignment done, get everything set up. And then when we get our new um, tie rod ends in from our order from earlier this week, we'll replace it. So guys, when you're done uh, getting your caliper nice and secure with your rotor and your brake lines nice and safe, make sure you take your fasteners and put them in a nice safe place so you aren't searching for them later on. All right, dude, so I lost the footage of me removing the upper and lower ball joints, but you know the deal. You're just gonna go ahead and give it one good whack, maybe two, no pussy footing, with some upward pressure or downward pressure, depending on which one you're doing, and that should break it free. Now let's get back to the, the installation here where I am just now about to swap over the wheel hub assembly. Right, guys, for the next step, you're going to need your half inch impact and the T55. I'm using a half inch to 3 8 because that's what I have. Just get a T55W and a half inch impact and we're going to go ahead and zip off these bolts. Now as we're pulling these out, you'll notice there's red Loctite on here. That means they wanted these to stay. So we'll make sure we put those on. All right, so lastly what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab this cable, push it through, and lift it up off the hole. Remember the orientation of where this clip is and which hole you're by. You notice here, and, and then when we bring the new one over, you'll see what it is. But remember that this line is by the arm, and then line up these hub, holes on the hub. It wouldn't really matter if it wasn't for this bracket. I guess you could just go ahead and turn it this way, and then it would matter, right? So if we want to make sure we can use the bracket, we got to line it up properly. So we'll grab this, we got the mod super modified or super angle modified knuckle from Part Shop Max. We're going to line up these marks on the lines, put it through the hole, make sure you're not to be pinching that. I'm pretty sure that's the wheel speed, wheel speed sensor. Now if you'll remember, they had red Loctite, so we're going to use the red Permatex Loctite here. And we're going to use a good little amount here, don't want to put too much because it'll make them really difficult to come out again later if you do need to take them out. Now I know that's the point, but... So we'll go ahead and get all three on there. I really like the smell of this Permatex. I know you're not supposed to be smelling it. Nobody smell it, but <clears throat> when you have a big nose like I do, you notice smells a lot. And uh, just like our Torco Brake Clean Vanilla Citrus Scenting scent, so good. The Torco uh, RGO, yeah, you're thinking gear oil doesn't smell good, but you're thinking you haven't been smelling the right gear oil. So, get yourself some Torco RGO, 
and smell it. All right, so you just want to make sure you're back on the other way. You're going on send it home mode. Hold the cable out of the way so you can pinch it. Send it down. All right, the next step, guys, we are going to be installing the super angle modded knuckle from Part Shop Max. First thing, remove the protect protective cover off the top ball joint. What you're going to also have to do is you're going to want to cock that back a little bit, make sliding it on a little bit easier. So, um, you're going to want to load, line up the bottom, get the top to line in, boom, easy peasy, just like that. Next step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab your nuts for both your lower ball joint. Go ahead and get that started easy like that. Next, top. You don't have to send it home. Just make sure you got some threads. You don't want to cross thread while you're sitting on there. But uh, so let's get the half inch impact and we'll start with the lower ball joint. Get that lined on. Make sure it's going home. You don't want to start and stop like I did there because you could get the ball joint to slip. Next step, we're going to be using the 3 8 impact with the 18 mil wobbly or the 11 16 and we're going to do the upper ball joint. You may have to put some pressure. The next step is we're going to be putting on the caliper. So we're just going to reverse the step that we did before. Go ahead and release your strap. Pull your top strap up to the top. Push it through the rotor. Now reverse that quarter turn and then you're going to line up the studs and go straight back. Hold it nice and flush. You just line that up and thread that in. Grab your second one now that that's nice and secure. Get a good amount on there. Make sure not to waste this amazing Permatex blue. And the reason we're using blue is we'll be changing our pads much more often than we'll be changing our hubs. Hubs are also attaching the wheel and everything to the car. This is just attaching the brakes. Okay. So make sure your impact's the right direction. That was on me, guys. It's actually a test for you. Wanted to see if you could see what was wrong. Well, look at those freaking angles. Wow, that brake line needs to be longer. Which, when we go to our extended upper and lowers, we can do it. But man, that's quite a bit more angle than was there. So, we've got this on. It's all nice and safe we have just the brake line but the reason we're not going to for the wheel speed sensor we're not going to connect that yet is because we actually are going to need to bend this bracket out of the way to get this connected so yes i'm aware that this ball uh this tie rod end boot is bad but it's way better than the one that we don't have to replace it with so if we went and just Tighten this in right now, and then we straighten the wheel out. So we'll just go ahead and send that home first. So again, three eight on a wob or three eight impact with an eighteen mil wobbly, or, and then definitely since this thing is bad, you're gonna want to put some pressure on it. Oop. I want some more. And if you were on the ground using the jack, then you would be on the ground and you could just use your jack. Do not lift your car off the jack stands, but you do need to put a little pressure. So we're gonna put a little pressure and then. Send it all the way home. All right. Remove the pressure and the jack. 
So as you can see right here with this being straight, and I have not adjusted this tie rod in at all, let's go ahead and walk around. I'll meet you on the other side. So you can see that this rotor is not straight. It is not at the same angle as the other one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to straighten this one out approximately. So you saw that's a probably seven, eight degrees, maybe about seven, eight degrees that is off between there just by the different length of the arms. So I'll meet you on the other side. And now you can see that this is no longer straight. So how are we going to do that? We know that one's straight. What are we going to do here? We're, what we'll do is to make this straight is I'm going to break this lock nut on, on here and we're going to move this out on the inner tie rod to make this straight approximately. Then we'll get it over in the alignment rack and we will get it aligned up and uh, all dialed in the way that we want. So what we're going to do is we'll grab the 22 millimeter or 13 16 18 millimeter and 11 16 and so to break this loose, I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna turn it so you guys can see, and then we'll reset everything like we had done. <clears throat> so what you're gonna want to do, take your 18 mil and grab onto the tie rod end itself, and then your 22 mil to the lock nut. And you're gonna want to work against each other. Don't be busting your knuckles up. Oh, sorry. You're gonna want to push against each other. There we go. So we broke that loose. Now you don't want to go nuts and taking that off because this is marking where stock is, where it was when the stock nut was. So what I'm going to do is straighten this back out after breaking that lock nut loose. I'm just going to want to go ahead and give it a little eyeball. So now that this is straight, what are we going to do? We're going to be backing out the tie rod on the inner tie rod. How are we going to do that? We're going to use a uh, Adjustment wrench, this is a vice grip style one, but as you can see here, here's a V and a flat spot. This has got a hex on there. There's a couple different tools. There's a ratcheting one and this one. So what we're going to want to do is we want to back it out. We left the nut where it was. <clears throat> I happen to know it's about 5 8 inches that we need to go and add here. It's actually 9 16 so in between. So we're just going to go ahead. And as you see, as I'm doing this, it's pushing this out, right? So if I wanted you guys to see that was happening, I'm going to go re-straighten this one out, and then we're going to adjust that out to straight. So now that this is straight-ish, let me just check the... So we got that. We'll come over here. You can see this is out. But with this wrench... So we're at about a half inch, a couple more turns, and you can see it's still not out, but I just want to triple check that this isn't turned and this is, this is towed out just a tiny bit. And the way I'm doing that is I'm looking down the disc and it's pointing at me, but I can see the back side, so I can see that it's pointing to the left a little bit. So there we go, we're straight. And you can see this is almost straight. So if you hold that up against the hub and you look down, you can almost see both sides. So, <clears throat> just need to come out just a little bit. And this is just to drive over to the rack. So then we're gonna take the locking nut and we're going to take that and lock it, take it all the way down and snug it up, almost snug. We're going to get the tie rod in into the most neutral position. We'll grab our 18 mil and our 22 mil. And then we're going to clamp together. So as you can see right here, I'm going to take my hand over and I'm pulling them to each other so that I'm not putting stress on the tie rod in or the nut. I'm pushing towards each other. And then if you get it to where you can get your both hands, grip strength, and now we're locked. And that is how you install the Super Angle Modded Knuckle from Part Shop Max. It's a very simple job. It took a little longer with us because we were explaining it to you. But if you and your buddy had your tools laid out, had your car up, 
like I said, under an hour and a half, maybe two hours uh, with an alignment <clears throat> down and dirty, but that's what it is. We'll show you guys the alignment at the end of the video, and then you'll get to see us go out to the track and actually try out these new knuckles. Um, I can't wait to see what they do. Make sure you're subscribed to Torco USA's YouTube channel so that you do not miss any of the Torco USA with NTG Builds Drive to Prospect. Uh -huh.